Being a pope entails a lot of responsibility. This is why it's only expected that a person who takes on the role should be someone reliable, respected, and responsible to lead the Catholic Church. However, Pope John XII is the total opposite, after he almost dragged the entire church to its demise because of the unpopely thing he did. Today, you will hear some of the most shocking and scandalous things Pope John XII did throughout his life. Who is Pope John XII? Of all, the past is replete with examples of sociopaths that torment both local populations and people worldwide. But the guy we're going to talk about today was really more of a kid since he was just 18 when he was voted to one of the highest ranking positions in the world. He wasn't like Stalin, Hitler, or any other previous totalitarian leader, but the fact that he was the Pope adds even more horrific context to his actions and crimes. Regretfully, there isn't much that has recently emerged regarding popes who have deviated from the road. The Pope and the Catholic Church as a whole have suffered from sexual abuse scandals since the 20th and 21st centuries, which have garnered international headlines. As we all know, popes were chosen by the whole public. From 955 until 963, Pope John XII presided over Western Christendom. Pope Damasus had been chosen by Emperor Theodosius some 600 years prior, but by the time of John XII, popes had been chosen by the Roman people. That is rather deceptive though, as the great majority of the votes cast for the Pope had been bought by wealthy families who either had a son or other family member competing for the office. In essence, the highest bidder won the role of Pope. Furthermore, it was frequently the case that the candidates weren't exactly models of virtue. In actuality, some of them, like John XII, had little knowledge of or concern for religion at all. Power was what many popes and those who supported them cared about, and the Pope was regarded as infallible during the Middle Ages. To put it another way, he was impervious to error, at least not in the eyes of the majority of people. Kings and emperors were a different scenario, and throughout history, popes have frequently served as the military ruler's instruments. But the Pope possessed the necessary momentum to prevail. It took money to turn the Pope to your side. Because the Pope possessed the ultimate weapon, excommunication, rulers frequently had to give up land, pay bribes, and at least partially heed his suggestions in exchange for his support. On top of this, the Pope held immense power because all Christians in Western Europe at the time were Catholic, and without these rites and practices, practices like Holy Communion, Confession, and Mass Attendance, a person could never ascend to heaven and could not, in theory, associate with any other Christian. Going back, Octavianus was his name before assuming the papal name John. Octavian, often known as Augustus, was the first Roman emperor, and his father, Duke Alberic II, named him after him. Alberic intended his son to succeed him as Rome's political leader as well as Pope. The Tusculum clan, Alberic's family, had controlled the region for many years. They were wealthy, influential, and well-respected. Alberic was also very well-liked. Following Alberic's passing in 954, Octavianus was chosen as Pope, and as John XII, the 18-year-old grew to become one of the most wealthy and powerful men on earth. This was made possible by the powerful and wealthy in Rome. Most individuals who became popes solely used their regnal or papal name. However, John XII ruled Rome in a secular as well as ecclesiastical capacity. In his capacity as a political leader, he gave orders under his actual name, and in his capacity as pope, he used John. Since not much of the Pope's work could be deemed heavenly, it is possible that this kind of dual personality helped the Pope have one foot firmly planted on earth during his pontificate. Pope John XII and his scandalous life. Popes were supposed to look holy and above human problems even back then, yet John frequently neglected his responsibilities and his teachings. John had to take lessons since he didn't know what the Pope was actually expected to do or how to govern the church. However, on many occasions, he would go hunting in the woods with his pals and a bottle or two of wine. Before the invention of firearms, hunting was a far more brutal activity than it is now, with victims being slaughtered by spears, swords, arrows, or even bands of dogs. Pope John would frequently return to the Vatican, covered in dirt and blood, inebriated and tired. Those within the church, the College of Cardinals, and the bishops in attendance were taken aback by this type of behavior but John was only getting started. 
John decided he wanted to be both a hunter and a warrior five years after becoming Pope. The majority of wealthy and noble young men of the period received some training in the art of battle, but this did not automatically make them good generals. For example, John commanded an army in 960 to retake land in northern Italy that had previously been ruled by the Vatican. In addition to capturing papal territory, John's family's strong rivals were the rulers of Benevento and Capua, whom he marched against. The other leaders, outnumbered by John and disinterested in the prospect of going to war with the Pope, enlisted the aid of Gisulf of Salerno, a strongman in southern Italy who posed a threat to Rome. John was obliged to concede, promising Gisulf that he would not impose papal sovereignty over his area since he was outnumbered and dominated. While this was going on, another tyrant, King Berengar II, who controlled a large portion of the Italian peninsula, decided to treat John similarly to any other adversary if he attempted to seize territory by acting like a commander and king. Because Berengar was strong, John needed help. King Otto of Germany was the only man strong enough to repel Berengar. Otto desired to become Holy Roman Emperor, the title bestowed upon the legendary Charlemagne in 800, which would have made him the nominal political ruler of all of Europe. The Pope made several public and serious pledges to Otto when he decided to assist John. These promises are made in the name of God and are difficult to break, which John eventually did. But first, in return for Otto's military defense, he anointed him as Holy Roman Emperor. His Colorful Love Life It's crucial to keep in mind that before the 1100s, priests and popes were free to get married, and it was common for a pope to have a mistress whether they were married or not. The only requirement was that it remain subdued and silent. While some popes maintained a quiet profile, others did not and undoubtedly had several mistresses. John started living a somewhat irreligious lifestyle in 937 after having such amazing role models and rising to become one of the richest and most powerful men in the world by the age of 18. He made good on his papal position because he started having affairs with as many women as he could. Many of them were married and became the spouses of influential Roman men. He probably informed these women that it was God's intention for them to have a relationship, but no one has ever confirmed this rumor. But I think we can all agree that if not all, then most of these women probably believed everything the Pope said to them since he was the Pope and Catholics felt he was infallible. Along with sleeping with one of his father's now deceased mistresses, John also had a child with her. However, this is only the tip of the iceberg. It's said that he also had beautiful women who were visiting Rome abducted or bought off to have sexual relations with him in the Pope's home, specifically the Lateran Palace. Occasionally, more than one at a time. But Pope John's partner was not female alone because history books will tell you that he adores his male companions. For almost a thousand years, stories about homosexuality in the Vatican have circulated, and Pope John XII is no stranger to these. In fact, Pope John XII was accused of having sex with men and boys and converting the papal residence into a very unsacred place. And he didn't miss a place. Palaces, by definition, are majestic and extraordinarily large structures designed to entertain large crowds while on vital missions. In the hands of rulers like Pope John XII, however, the various chambers erected to host ambassadors and international leaders served just as well as housing concubines, both male and female. Rather than walking the streets of Rome looking for someone who would satisfy his lust, the Pope, John allowed an unspecified number of people to reside in his home. His boisterous pals from the gambling dens, hunting parties and pubs could all be entertained at once in what had to be history's greatest whorehouse. This kept his actions largely hidden. While it was already a long time ago since this infamous Pope left the world, it's undeniable that the questionable things he did left a mark on history, especially on the credibility of the leaders of the Catholic Church, and sadly, it might take a lot more years to be forgotten or never at all. How about you? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more stories from history.